So most of the time when we want to measure the mass of something in the lab, we're going to use an analytical balance. And analytical balances kind of look like one of these over here. You've probably seen them in our lab before if you've looked around. They have a typical capacity of 100 to 200 grams. I think ours actually go up a little bit further to about 320 grams or so, but the cheaper ones are sort of in the lower end here. They've got a sensitivity of a fraction of a milligram, so 0.1 to 0.01 milligrams, and that's the smallest increment that they can measure. Our balance is way out to 0.0001 of a gram, so 0.1 milligram. So our balances have a sensitivity of 0.1 milligram in the lab. You can also use a micro balance. And a micro balance is going to be a couple of orders of magnitude more expensive than an analytical balance. So an analytical balance might run you three to four thousand dollars. A micro balance might start running you sort of ten to a hundred thousand dollars. And its sensitivity is uh, much smaller. Uh, somewhere in the order of maybe a tenth of a microgram. So you can see it is point oh 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 one of a gram. The operation of an analytical balance is quite complicated and so this diagram gives us a simple idea. We've got our balance pan that we place our object on and uh, there's a series of beams inside that will transmit the force. So for instance uh, the weight pushes down on here and it's transmitted to this beam here which causes this lever to increase in height. What this does is it pulls out a wire from in between the poles of a magnet. So this mechanical force upwards is actually uh, uncompensated right now. And so an electromagnetic force is used to oppose it to bring it back into balance again. And so how does it know to apply this kind of force? Well, there's a null sensor position right here. And so as soon as this changes, it basically sends a signal to the servo amplifier that passes a current through this electromagnet to essentially pull the beam back down again to oppose the weight of the object you've put on the balance pan. And it does so until the null position sensor basically indicates that you're back in the normal null position. And this uh, input necessary to balance things out to make sure the electromagnetic force is balanced by the mechanical force coming from the weight of the object is converted using an analog to digital converter. So this idea that the analog world, everything is continuous, but in the digital world, we need to change things into ones and zeros. And this is ultimately read by a microprocessor and displayed and calculated on our balance to say, in this case, 122.57 grams, which wouldn't actually be very sensitive at all for an analytical balance. One of the neat things about it is that most of these balances now come with an internal calibration method uh, our mass sorry, built in, so they actually calibrate themselves. You can hear them. Maybe once an hour you'll hear sort of a click and a whir as the balance weight basically is placed on here. And the instrument basically checks that the calibration mass is exactly equal to the mass measured, otherwise it makes a correction factor. So these do them, you know, once an hour if they detect a temperature change in the lab or whatever kind of time parameters you've set to it. We certainly have some things to worry about when we use the analytical balance. Um, the first thing is the whole entire thing has to be level. And so on the outside of the balance, you typically find these little uh, circular areas with a little air bubble inside. The air bubble is inside of sort of some oil. And you have to level things out. So you have adjustments on here. You can sort of move the balance in one of four different directions to kind of level the dot until it's back in the center again. Okay, and if it's centered and level, then it reads true. Uh, we do have to calibrate from, site, from time to time, and so there are internal calibration weights, but we still need to apply our own calibration weights to it. Uh, another problem when you're dealing with these analytical balances is that the fingerprints themselves have masses, and you need to make sure that when you're weighing anything, you're not leaving behind fingerprints. Or, and so you have to use gloves or paper towels or Kim wipes or something when you're transferring things on or off. You also have to worry about materials that grab water out of the air, so hygroscopic materials, hygroscopic materials. And so that 
presents a large problem because if the material that you're weighing actually extracts moisture from the air, when you place it on your balance pan, the weight will keep going up. So we have specific mechanisms that we use in analytical to sort of mitigate this problem. Um, we also have to worry about vibrations. So vibrations will start to um, alter the perceived weight we see on our analytical balance. And so we normally use a very heavy table. Uh, you'll see sort of marble top tables around the lab. And uh, the idea is that the larger the table is, the more of a force you have to apply to cause it to vibrate. So very large tables correspond to very low levels of vibration typically.